Hi there, this is David Ketchner. You heard last show, my good friend Will Ferrell. I am also in that movie with Ron Burgundy. Do what you can to support podcasts that are done independently by people like Mike, who does it in his bathtub. What? He does it in his basement. I stand corrected. I'm David Ketchner. I don't really have a southern accent, but I'm doing it right now because, well, Ron Burgundy! This show is clean, pretty much. Mike's Daily Podcast. Episode 842. Hello, this is Mike Matthews, broadcasting from Cafe Anyway here at the last place on Earth, located somewhere in Pod Castro Valley. Today is part two of my intern interview with Pete Jordan of the Washington band Cloud Person and singer-songwriter Kai Alfred Hillig. Plus, we'll hear from Shelley Shuhart, Floyd the Floor Man, John Deere the Engineer, and No More Race Together. Mike's Daily Podcast. On my cup when I pick it up at Starbucks. And I, you know what? Actually, I haven't been there in forever. Mike's Daily Podcast. So Basil got his bandages removed yesterday, but now begins a whole new set of pain since now he has to wear a plastic cone so he won't play with the stitches on his front paw all day and that would destroy the necessary sutures but i can't complain mike's daily podcast he at least still has a paw and someday someday mike's he'll be okay okay daily Okay. Podcast. Till then, there are some yeah! unnecessary names for his cone look. There's Ming the Merciless, Queen Elizabeth, Reverse Nipper. You have to think about that. That's for you RCA fans. And the Walking Spiral Coin Gravity Display. And the uh, he also kind of looks like a furry lamp. That's upside down. All right. Come up with your own. Email me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. Oh, look who just walked in. Oh, my God, Mike Matthews. It's so, it's so hard to get shop supervisor, and that is, like, so mean. No, I mean, he's fine. Dogs adapt to all kinds of things. You see the dogs with the homeless people, and they're, like, happy. And Dalmatians are happy hanging out on fire trucks. But Basil is getting used to his cone. He has to have it. Otherwise, he's going to lick his paw, and that could cause more damage. And the only thing I I really need to keep an eye on is keeping the inside of his cone clean. Because he tends to slobber. He's a boxer. He's got big jowls. And yeah, you you, you know what I'm saying. It becomes a huge cup of slobber. So I'm keeping towels around, cleaning it out, making sure he's all fine. But he's mostly sleeping for the most part, and... That's mostly great. Okay, Mike Matthews, but don't make fun of him. And what the hell is a Ming the Merciless? He was this guy in Flash Gordon. He had kind of this big collar. So it kind of reminded me of his cone collar. Uh-huh. Yeah. Look who else just walked in. Hello, Mike. This is Floyd the Floor Man. And this is John Deere the Engineer. I hope Basil's okay. Yeah, he's fine. Except for when Floyd talked, he got a little scared. He's not used to Floyd's voice by now. No one is used to Floyd's voice by now. That's true. I'm not either. There you go. So here's an interesting thing I found. And that is, well, first off, they're taking King Richard III's remains. Remember they discovered him? What was it like a year ago? Oh, no, it was 2012. Discovered under a parking lot. So they are returning those remains uh, today on a solemn tour to the battlefield where he was slain 530 years ago. And then also, Starbucks has announced that they are ending the Race Together campaign in their stores. But they say the effort's not over. Their head of the company, Howard Schultz, said to um, employees today, they'll no longer be encouraged to write Race Together on drink cups, according to Reuters. But the company's effort to promote discussion of racial issues is far from over. The world's biggest coffee chain kicked off a U.S. race relations campaign last week when it published a full-page ad in major U.S. newspapers with the words, Shall We Overcome? 
at center page and race together and the Starbucks logo near the bottom. Employees behind the counter were also given the option of writing race together on customers' cups. The campaign was met with skepticism on social media, with many complaining the company was overstepping its boundaries with a campaign on sensitive cultural topics that had no place in the coffee shop's lines. Starbucks said the phase of the campaign that involved messages on drink cups was always scheduled to end today. Schultz also said, I know this hasn't been easy for any of you. Let me assure you that we didn't expect universal praise. We leaned in because we believe that starting this dialogue is what matters most. And he says that Starbucks plans more race together activities, including efforts to expand into urban neighborhoods and hire 10,000 opportunity youth over the next three years and produce advertising on the campaign with Gannett Companies USA Today. Wow, Howard Schultz, all I heard at the end there was not so much about how to help race relations, but how to promote your damn company. Thank you. Yeah, we see right through your ploy. But on the other hand, that's a great thing you're doing. Uh, I think that you need to email me. Let me know what you think. Email me, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. We read your comments on the section, emails from email. Also, email me there if you'd like to be a guest on the show or if you'd like to sponsor the show, Mike's Daily Podcast at gmail.com. And there's also the website, Mike's Daily Podcast.com, which has a myriad of, myriad of places to, yeah, because myriad is just one of those words that deserves a cool little soap opera stab. A myriad of places to listen to us, including on iTunes. And if you do listen to us, subscribe to us there. You can comment on the show there. If you do that, more people find out about us and we don't languish in obscurity. Like David Ketchner was talking about at the beginning of the show. Uh, you can also hear us on YouTube, SoundCloud, TuneIn, Stitcher, Podomatic, Mixcloud, Spreaker, Player FM, Ameristream. Catch my radio show on Wolverine Radio in Connecticut weekdays from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. There's a link there. And there's also links to where to share the show with your friends. We're on Facebook. Like the Facebook page when I post a new show. Share it with your friends and more people find out about us. We're on Twitter. Retweet us and more people find out about us if you do that. We're also on Instagram, Yelp, and Tumblr. Links to all those places. And the Amazon link. If you're going to buy anything on Amazon, go through mikesdailypodcast.com first and buy it on that Amazon link. And that will help us out too. There's also the blog, the daily podcast picture, and all my past interviews at mikesdailypodcast.com. And speaking of interviews... Into an interview. Don't look cool in that one. James Bond. Yeah. <laughs> he, he is. He says the little dog, though. If you turn around with a dog this big, like, mm, everyone's like, God damn, that's a... <laughs> Hello, Mr. Bond. <laughs> Wow, that's a huge dog you've got a on Saint your lap. A St. Bernard on my lap. <laughs> yes. Yeah. That, that's a huge lap dog you've got, Kai. <laughs> but it's so the, if, the, huge. if the dog was a St. Bernard and you turn around and you can't even see the guy, it's just, just a fuck. <laughs> yeah, just, hello, I've been expecting you. <laughs> yeah, that's a big, bigger dog than Pushy Galore had. <laughs> huge. Shay. Wow. Yeah. So, so when you do a John, James Bond voice, it turns into Jimmy James Stewart after a while. Jimmy Stewart that sounds like my dad. Oh, a little puppet. That your dad sounds like Jimmy Stewart a little bit. He has he has a little. My dad has a little bit of this kind of uh, a slight lisp thing going. It, it's it's kind of like this. <laughs> A little bit. That's an exaggeration. I'm just imagining you do as your dad now, and I'm laughing. My my dad looks nothing like me. Actually, he's oh. he's, a, he's like a very short. He looks more like like Pete. He, Pete might be Pete's dad. Ah, my dad might be Pete's dad in reality. Yes. We're talking to Kyle Alfred Hillig and Pete Jordan, <laughs> and so on the last show we had Pete Jordan's cloud person. We were listening to Hospital King, and uh, today, oh, what should I do? Should I do a Kai? Should I go back and forth? Hey, you know, you do you. You know, it, it, that would be weird. We're just riding the ride, man. Yeah, you know, okay. there is a YOLO California. Did you know that we passed it on the way here? And I was oh. like, whatever's going on there has to be some crazy. <laughs> let's do. All right, let's let's focus on Pete. Okay, because this is Sorry, what ended my marriage. Was idea. I didn't focus on the, the other the, person. On me. Why did Basil just turn and look at you, Pete, with such intensity? Because he was like, "Will you be my mommy?" <laughs> <laughs> and the answer is yes. Yeah. We're talking to Pete Jordan and Kai Alfred Hillig, two amazing singer-songwriters. Uh, they stayed the night here along with their pimp, Brian. And <laughs> they, Accurate. 
Uh, I made them bacon and egg. Oh, I also made my crock pot lasagna. Oh my for god, you. you take good care of us. Oh my god, you're a lovely host. Thank you're you. You're amazing. So what should we say to? Uh, there's so many local musicians that have never been to my house. I always do like Skype with somebody from Oakland. It's ridiculous. I no. should just have them come, come over. stay here and cuddle with Basil. <laughs> That's right. It's a lovely place. Come back to Jamaica. Well, it's just like being in the Bat Cave here. It's really quite inspiring. Mm-hmm. Well, tell me about your current tour, Kai Alfred Hillig and Pete Jordan. We're doing another West Coast tour. We're doing the same thing we did last year, playing the same songs in the same way. Uh, new, a, new dance. Absolutely moves. nothing exciting. If they start turning on strobe lights, we're like, turn that off. <laughs> Uh, if, if people clap, we say stop. Wait until the end to clap. It's please. the most boring tour uh, that anybody could come see, so don't come see it. Stay at home. Okay. <laughs> I'm glad you came on the podcast to unpromote your tour. Well, I mean, if, if you really want to be original, you got to go against the grain. Right. So I'm going to say I, I think that you know most of the fans are garbage, and, I, <laughs> and, and I, I'm turning the judgment around. You ever, they always, you know, they come to the show. How was he? They say, "How was he?" I'm turning around. How was the crowd? Meh. I'm telling you right now, you guys are meh. Do you know your comedic inspiration is this man right here? Is Brian? Because you look Kai at, at Brian the whole time. You're funny. It's because I'm attacking him with my words. So that's because oh. every whenever we I'm trying to upset him. If I can break his spirit, I'm I, then I go I go home happy. That, then the tour was a success. Okay. He give he he okay's what we said. Like uh, the first show, I said something, and I was looking at him, and he immediately shook his head. He's like, no. And I just stopped talking and put his song. It's like Britney Spears' handler. Yeah. You know? Yeah. <laughs> you know, he says the wrong thing. They're like, like no, no, you, know, you didn't do that. Let's just I say didn't that. do Let's that. say that. Stick to the script. Yeah, stick to the script. Harvey Weinstein was talking about that sh- exact same thing on the Graham Norton show where he was saying that um, there was some director that was going around promoting a, mm-hmm. a, a movie yeah. and he had no energy, like on NPR. He was like, yeah, so we put the guy on. Yeah, and, his, and, his and, wife has the same complaint. Yeah. So Harvey fires, not Harvey, Weinstein. Did I say Firestein? Oh, my God. Did I get two guys from mixed up? I, 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 wish, I wish it was Harvey Firestein. What was that, Pete? Why I was figured I'd do a little farty sound. Basil farted That's kind of my earlier. thing. What, did fart, did, Your dog farted did on Did fart really. Basil on you? He did, well, well, and then he wagged Basil. his little stub. What well, was funny, yeah. It was, it was, I was like, don't fart. fart on me. And, goes, and then the happiness <laughs> about farting that was illustrated through the nubby tail movements. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, so much joy has been exuded through my buttocks. <laughs> well, you know, he's on these pain meds because of his uh, paw. And oh, he's well, not... Buddy. Now I feel like a Right I'm, I'm just happy that I'm able to cradle him like a baby right now. This is doing so much for me. You have no idea. Uh, I love you, Basil. They are quite a pair. Oh. I, I should call this podcast the Basil cast. It really should be. I mean, he's a lovely creature. He really is. He's so happy. He's got his jowls drooped all over your shoulder. And <laughs> this is the great. happiest I've been in the last couple days. Yay, Kai! Since Yay. I was, This is the happiest I've been since I was slightly drunk last night. <laughs> <laughs> No, it's hard to live. Well, your cat lived to a ripe old age, 21. 21 that years old. That is a long Hail time. Hell yeah. I was, I really, there was really a part of me that thought this animal is invincible because his blood work was even coming back. Amazing. They're like, he's 21. This is unreal. Yeah. So for me, might- I, I was like, I think he might be immortal. This, that seemed like a real, a real possibility in my yeah. mind. Yeah. yeah. Turns out, uh, not so much. Well, you know, and then like. Boxers don't live very long, so I'd be lucky to get him for 10 years. Is he you know? dead in my arms here? Uh, no. I, I, can't, I can't take two in a week. Two in a week is where I draw the line on animal deaths. Do you, you probably feel his little boxer heart beating I can. your hand. Oh, stay so, with us. <laughs> let's see. My next question is to get out of this depressing topic. I love you, Basil. Don't go. Is, is, uh, tell me about the song Pariah. I was going to play Pariah. Is about the This has a violin in it. Yes, it does. Both songs do. Our our, our love Betsy, our lovely violin player, left recently and kind of ushered us into the psychedelic rock from the folk rock. But uh-huh. Pariah is I met a very unique person who is kind of the champion of his social scene and an amazing songwriter and at the same time My ears are ringing. back then <laughs> Not Kai. No, uh, no, 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 fuck. Very, well, very much a wallflower, like the leader of his scene, but but kind of standoffish and and just that phenomenon and, and kind of how I related to him. Like I'm not really like that at all, but for some reason I felt like we had a lot in common, especially oh. this one experience we had. Humble that, brag. You didn't have sex with him, did you? 
Uh, with my ears. That's ear- not allowed. With, my, with my ears. With my ears. With your okay. Yes, but it's it's about a, a dear friend of mine. That's who, okay in the Bible, right? That yeah, you can have sex with mm-hmm, someone in your ears. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, with ear holes. Uh-huh. So, but yeah, that's, that's what it's about. <laughs> that was that was tenacious D, right? The romantics, Renaissance men. <laughs> uh, <laughs> you're not a fan of tenacious D. Guy. I like tenacious D, uh, especially that first record, and I really like Jack Black and his uh, pudgy bald friend. I think they're amazing. Yeah. KG. Uh, yeah, I think they're great. I, 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 anybody who was like, I hate Tenacious D, would be like, no, nah, you don't have a pulse. You're really kind of a Happiness. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you hate happiness. happiness. That's what your real issue is. And sunshine. But anyway, okay, so, and then you have, um, you mentioned centrifuge in the song. Yeah. Uh, I yeah. like that. The use of the word centrifuge in a song, it's awesome. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, it's, it's, I mean, that, that part's about like, it's, it's sometimes it's a very thankless task, getting on stage a lot and playing and, and trying to get your music out there, but I, it, that's about like we are, kind of the pulse. Like keep doing it. You're you're doing good for the world, even if it's just like five people hear you and enjoy it. You know. And and uh, like last night, they were really enjoying you at vacation, and these kids were just and we were cramped in this tiny little basement. Mm-hmm. It honest to God, we got to be talking about this because this was the most surreal thing. It was I a mean, great we show. On, we All were, those people were lovely. The basement of a vintage clothing store Yeah, at, in, in like the Tenderloin. We saw, what did we see last night waiting for them to open the place? There was the, I, I, the card I'm, stall. It was like, oh, it, man. it was like the apocalypse. That's what Seriously. the Tenderloin is. It's like a homeless apocalypse. And, uh, and I, I uh, yeah, I'd heard about the Tenderloin and, uh, it is. It did not let me down. There, I saw. Uh, I saw butt cheeks. Uh-huh. I saw yeah, everything smells like too. urine. Yeah. That that area needs like a bubble bath. Yes. So I mean, not not the human beings. I'm not. I'm not that guy. But I, I just the sidewalks. I want bubble bath and I want a, a, Ooh, a scrub brush. A I will. I will Are you clean quoting up the directly city. from Taxi Driver now? No, I. I want. I, I am running for the mayor of San Francisco. <laughs> yeah, I will give this. I'm I giving this city seats. a bubble bath. <laughs> <laughs> um, it was. It was Hilly, pretty, 2016. Stinky. It was uh, scared. The woman's car stalled. Uh, she and, and her transmission went out, oh, so we yeah. couldn't push the car out of the way. That did happen too. And, and there was a gal that that uh, that. All right. So the, the the homeless people in the tenderloin were so aggressive. Yeah. We, we parked the car, and the knock, guys knocking on the door like money, 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 money. I'm like, I'm like, well, just let, let me get out because in Washington, they're very respectful. You know, they say they're on the side of the. I know. I'm sorry, Basil. Um, <laughs> they, they 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 sit on the side of the road or whatever. And you can, and they're like, they're, they have a sign that says, "Hey, hey, if if, yeah. you're, if it wouldn't inconvenience you, uh, some money, I'm in trouble." Oh, here you go, easy exchange, very pleasant. Here, it's like money. You're like, I don't have any money. They're like, I'll kill you and you know, eat your family or whatever. You know, there was a gal that was following Brian. She she said, "Do you have any money?" And he said, "He said, ah, oh, you know, kind of like no or whatever. I don't know the, the common lie that people with no hearts say to homeless people." <laughs> yeah. And and she's like, she's like a nickel, nickel, and and we were like a two and a half blocks down the street. You hear back there like nickel, nickel, please, one nickel, please. a nickel. You know. Yeah. Oh, see, inspiring. I, there's, I mean, the, the Tenderloin is a Tom Waits song. Yeah. I, 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 if, I, if I don't come back with an album of material after this tour, I, 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 it's because I'm an idiot, you know? That was... And I might be. Beautiful how you just explained all that. That was wonderful. Go ahead, Pete. I'm a poet. Oh, no, it was just sur- surreal. Now, I was going to say Carletta was amazing. Oh, yeah. Oh. But my mind is still blown. I need to interview literally. uh her at Get some her point. out here. You amazing, should. He, amazing. Uh, she would love to to come and, and speak with you on. Yeah, I didn't sure really get to talk to her last night. She was really concerned about putting reverb behind you, Pete. She was, and I appreciated that. She likes the because reverb. My voice yeah. dry is the worst thing in the entire world. Worse than my snoring. When we when we played with her last time, she I, she hooked up the reverb machine and was really cranking it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Now you were in the living room last night, Pete, sleeping on the couch mm-hmm. and and because I'm an I'm a gracious host that makes sure that my guests sleep on couches. And did you just crack your knuckles on Mike, Kai? Good heavens! Uh, you really do have avian bones. That's all my ribs. He has avian <laughs> bone syndrome. God, I'm t- t- tangenting. Ah! You're snoring. With Sorry, me. I'm nesting over here. I'm working on an Thank egg. Thank you. Thank you. I'm working on an egg. <laughs> it's a big in. <laughs> it's a big in. Well, Brian, what was what was our hashtag? It's coming out. <laughs> hashtag. <what>? <laughs> <laughs> hashtag. It's coming out of me. 
bonus. <laughs> that, oh, it's so funny. Uh, uh, Dan Harmon on the last tour was trying so hard to get us to hashtag this hashtag he made up so that people could follow the tour, and I flatly refused it. I was joking with Pete that we're going to start using his hashtag from last time for this tour, so it has absolutely no relevance. And then, you know, a hashtag it's coming out of me. Oh, okay. So these are the hashtags we <laughs> come up with. I'm sorry. <laughs> we're just full of b- we have nothing Brian's, of value to say. Brian's walking out of the room. What? He has to. He can't handle it. He can't take the heat. He can't take the heat. Uh, Basil's <laughs> really shaking his nub right now. He was really excited. He, he's uh, like, he, I love that there's this disconnect, too. He's like, something joyous is going on. I can't be a part of it because I don't have language. But I don't know what it, but I'll just lay on Kai. Yeah, hey, I like this. This is working. Well, Basil's had some interesting things come out of him, I've told you. Oh, yeah, you said grass. grass. He has yeah. some butt grass. And <laughs> luckily, I always carry a lot of napkins with me in case. You're oh, good. you need the like, napkins in that It's because you're yeah. a good dog owner. You're yeah. looking after him. I, and I don't want feces on my hands, basically. Who does? None of us do. <laughs> well, though it happens a lot. Yeah. Where did we go? We left. We left this immortal plane. And you we're, were about to okay. tell me that my snoring isn't actually yeah, that bad, I, I believe. And thank you. Pete's snoring, it was soothing. Every morning, Kai's like, I hate you. This is his perception I of this. He's colored this. Ever. Mentioning that I did not sleep well due to his snoring uh, is, is not necessarily what he's made it out to be. I want to say that I do have the boxers sleeping in the room next to me, and it, I, boxers do have the <laughs> kind of thing. But I didn't hear yours, Pete. Thank so. you. And as far as my, I don't know if Jack, my roommate, heard you either. But no, but well, I mean, he did hear I, my I, drunk girl impression while he was trying to sleep this morning. Yeah. Which what I is love. your? I, love. I didn't hear it. Can I hear it? Also, a uh, cloud person's I, new bass player is drunk girl. Yeah. Is that kind of like drunk girl from Saturday Night Live? That I don't one? know. I don't. I haven't seen it. It probably no, is. No, I imagine that drunk girls, that drunk girl. the drunk girl impression is across the board is probably somewhat similar. I think we've all seen this. And, and you don't, you don't really get the full brunt of it unless you see him doing the walk. You know. Yeah, I have like a hey. fake high heeled. I'm hammered walk. That's what? There were a couple girls there when you played. Two drunk girls came down and were like listening for they a little while. They were just drawn to yep. your drunk girl. And I it, like like moths to a sad. And they flame. were doing that. <laughs> and they do the horse thing where they kind of slap it, <laughs> and they're kind of like. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's their mating ritual. They were hoping that someone would impregnate them. Um, well, what's your drunk girl impression? I, I can't do it on, on, okay. on the See, spot. No I'm that. not you, Mike. I don't have no, I the can't. bravery to just take my voices and, and let them and bring them to the light of day. I, my Alan Alda kills, by the way. Do it. You're Kevin. You're, do it. I was about to say you're Kevin Costner. <laughs> you haven't done a Kevin Costner. <laughs> Brian hates my Alan Alda. Well, my Alan Can you do Alda- Kevin Costner? Um, I don't, that's such. Is a, that a thing? Uh, Isn't he? Everyone like, has a Kevin Costner. As you see in the video, it's down to the left, down to. I have Is that what he said? I have a Kevin Costner impression for you. All right, I'll do Kevin Costner. I won't do drunk. I'll do Kevin Costner. God, I can't stop dancing with wolves. <laughs> <laughs> that's pretty good, right? Oh, I'm a Native American. Amazing. Uh, I don't know. I don't, uh, My Alan Alda uh, is Howard Stern, basically. I hate this water I'm world. I'm Alan Alda, <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, I'm on MASH. That's all I can say. <laughs> That's actually not bad. That's what you pretty Thank good. you, Kai. <laughs> that's actually not bad. Screw you, Brian. <laughs> actually, that's also what I just did there. You just is got my, the no head shake. That was my <laughs> Steve Carell. <laughs> I'm Steve Carell, and this is me shouting. That's also really good. That's also really good. <laughs> I don't know, because he and I have almost the same voice like that, and you got to sound like you're about to start laughing <laughs> or crying simultaneously. That's really good. <laughs> And All right, so this Carletta blew our minds, and now we have our, we were Humpty Dumpty back together, and you re blew our minds again. Yeah. Okay. All the king's horses will not. Uh, will never be Finally, the I'd like to ask you about the song Pariah because I just cut out the every part. No, I'm just kidding. Let's play Pariah right now. It is Cloud Person Pete Jordan, and it's um, this is a great song. And where can they find this song, Pete Jordan? On Bandcamp, cloudperson.bandcamp.com. Excellent. On Mike's Daily Podcast. You fault me for my imperfection. It's human nature. You're a pariah in a social situation that you
So now, uh, the wonderful Pete Jordan is going to play a song called Pointless Paper Bills. What was the inspiration for this, Pete? Uh, Some of my songs I write uh, based on dreams that I actually remember, which doesn't usually happen. Um, And a lot of times I'll read a book, and just for some reason my dream will be I am one of the characters in the book. Um, So this is written from the perspective of a character from... uh, Russian novel called Master and Margarita. In the very beginning, it's a really f***ed up, trippy book, and it's like allegory, and, and it, it's amazing. Uh, Bulgakov is the author. Anyway, ah. so in the beginning, the, there are these two authors sitting on a park bench just having kind of a normal, you know, intellectual discussion, and then all of a sudden, this, this dude kind of like comes out of thin air and sits down and is really f***ing weird and basically predicts one of their deaths in a kind of a whimsical way. And like freaks him out, and it's from his perspective. Oh wow! Yeah. I gotta read this. And it's, it's who? It's amazing. Uh, Mikhail Bulgakov. 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 Yeah, it, it was actually like super incendiary at the time because you know the the regime um, didn't like people writing bad things about them, and, and each each of the villainous characters in the book represents some, someone uh. from from the current regime, and he. Like Bulgakov, I believe, just kind of shelved the manuscript for a number of years because he, you know, people were being sent to gulags for this kind of stuff. So it's a really crazy book. It just gets intensely insane. Ooh! So I highly recommend. Sounds it. good. All right, now we got the reverb on your voice, so you're ready to sing. I shall sing. I remember 
Remember the day we met, heads were rolling, you were talking of the end times with a glimmer in your eye. Since then my brain has been relieved of disbelief So I'm able to account for what has happened He still visits me Whispering Telling me the things that make them think me crazy But I know it's safer in here with these dead souls And yet I'm concerned with the outside on our way towards the answers, we were asking the wrong questions, being given very reasonable lies. And their castle is a broken shack made of pointless paper bills, representing what we owe but cannot pay. We can take it all. If only we knew its direction But it only exists in our minds The collective instinct for cast as old as time with the underground yeah. Yeah. Oh, Basil liked it too. Oh, Basil. as we go outside of cafe anyway here at the last place on earth located somewhere in Podcastro Valley tomorrow we will bring you another part of the interview this will be part three of our four parts and we're going to get to some of Kai Alfred Hillig's music and also talk to Pete Jordan some more of Cloud Person and here's today's podcast picture. The picture is another one of Kai Alfred Hillig and Pete Jordan, a cloud person. And we're actually standing in my kitchen. And uh, it was a fun little morning. I made them breakfast, like I was saying on the last show. And they uh, had fun playing with Basil, who needed the help, needed his spirits raised. And I was wearing my Doctor Who shirt because I'm a geek. And you can see that picture now at mikesdailypodcast.com. Mike Matthews, that's like so nice that this guy's cheered up Basil the Boxer. He like means it because he's getting all those horrible names that you give him. They're clever names. No, they're not. Well, the last show, Valentino and Vice and Bentley, they wanted to go yell at the people that had the sharp whatever it was in front of their house that injured Basil, which I still don't know what it was that caused that massive injury and that massive hospital bill. Mike Matthews, you should have gotten pet insurance. <laughs> Well, now I know. But he's been so good so far. I've had him for five years and nothing bad's happened. But I guess that's uh, Murphy's Law. You mean Murphy's Pa. There actually is a Murphy's Pa in Pleasanton, not too far away from us here at Podcastro Valley. But yes, that's very good, Shelly. Thank you. Next show, part three of my Into an Interview with Kai Alfred Hillig and Pete Jordan. Plus, we will hear from Benita, the disgruntled fiddle player and the brewmaster. Mike's Daily Podcast is written and produced and performed by Mike Matthews. His podcast is super easy to find. Download or listen to his show and read his blog at mikesdailypodcast.com. Email Mike now at mikesdailypodcast at gmail.com. See you tomorrow. Bye.